Hi there, welcome to another edition of Yuga by DB Tech Talk series. My name is Sid Chaudhary and today I'm gonna walk you through performance and scalability challenges with MongoDB asset transactions. Let's dive right in. What's so good about MongoDB? We think the idea of ability uh, to model your data as documents and not be uh, burdened with this, the strongly uh, structured relationships that a typical relational RDBMS forced us to do is one of the biggest advantages of a document database like MongoDB. So the net result is that it's flexible, very easy to change the data model, fast because we're accessing a single key or a single document at any point of time, and it's fun because overall development becomes faster. However, there are some bad and some ugly parts to MongoDB. The bad part is about data durability. Over the years, MongoDB has struggled to ensure that the data that you are persisting into the database is actually uh, going to survive crashes and restarts. There have been too many confusing flags which have tripped uh, both developers and operations engineers uh, in order to ensure that MongoDB is, is a resilient, uh, durable data store. Many of these problems MongoDB has been trying to fix over the years. Secondly is about asset transactions. Now the D in asset stands for durability, but the ACI is, is where, the, where uh, the remaining parts of the problem reside. Um, MongoDB has been working towards getting uh, single document asset and single shard or also known as single replica set asset transactions. However, the ability to uh, transactionally update two documents that may be residing in two different replica sets um, in a sharded cluster deployment is something that MongoDB does not have today. And that significantly limits of your ability to build a highly scalable, highly performant application. Let's take a quick look into MongoDB release history over the last you know, 10 odd years of its existence. It originally started in 2009 as a uh, easy to use JSON document based data modeling database. Uh, it had a monolithic architecture which means that it, it, it was not possible to distribute data across multiple nodes. In, in 2011 as the 2.0 release came by, um, people had started using MongoDB for important applications and as a result, high availability became important and hence the need, hence the addition of replica sets, uh, which are essentially uh, a combination of one primary and multiple secondaries so that uh, an operations engineer can manually fail over to the secondary if a primary node dies. However, the challenges around durability uh, continued and, and that led to uh, 2015's 3.0 release when uh, MongoDB uh, started retiring its original storage engine which was the MMAP v1 storage engine in favor of its recent acquisition Wired Tiger storage engine. In 2016 uh, it continued to build on top of that work. Um, it added the ability to do fast failovers uh, of the primary uh, on failure to, to secondaries using uh, a leader election protocol called Raft. And it also introduced the notion of linearizable read concern to ensure that um, strongly consistent reads are, are served back to the users if, if that is what the user desire or the developers desire. Last, lastly, this year it added the ability to do multiple document transactions residing in a single replica set. Needless to say, this has been a long and a painful journey for MongoDB to, to to get to a, a, a distributed transactional uh, database. Um, the, the, the thing is, since it was never designed for this kind of an architecture, it still continues to pay, uh, continues to have uh, significant costs associated with, with its, its uh, transactional architecture. Let's take a quick example of uh, a, a shopping uh, application, e-commerce application, where uh, client one, um, is, an, is doing a transactional update of uh, an order and, and a stock. So it's uh, increasing the order by the, by the item count and decrease the stock by that item count. And obviously that, that entire, both these operations have to either succeed or fail together, hence the need for start transaction and, and commit transaction. 
Now, the right concern, which is how many uh, nodes have to acknowledge before this, this right can be committed, has to be at majority to ensure that your data is not lost. The first problem with this is that the secondaries uh, do not do synchronous replication from the primaries, they do asynchronous replication from the primaries, which means that there is always a replication lag uh, between the secondary and the primary for these transactional rights. In a, in a highly loaded system, this replication lags becomes significant because the secondaries keep falling behind the primaries as new transactional rights arrive. Now let's go towards the read path. If I'm a reader who wants to f see the latest uh, value of the stock, uh, then I have to, I, had, I don't have any choice but to do a read concern of linearizable because that is what will force MongoDB's primary to actually consult the secondaries and see if, if the, the value that it has uh, for that particular item is actually correct. So the result with linearizable lead concern is that it involves a quorum read, which means the primary consults the secondaries and that slows down reads. So net result is if once you start using uh, the, the transactional and strongly consistent aspects of MongoDB, you start paying penalties of latency, which is significant when you are building user facing applications because the users can now perceive that increase in latency. So what are the hidden costs of, of you know, MongoDB 4.0 transactions. First is the high latency problem that we talked about, slows down the read, write paths and slows down the read path. Secondly, it's about low throughput, especially in a, uh, if, you, if you want to continue to use transactions, you will run in a single replica set model and in single replica set, your primary is the one that is involved in all kinds of writes, both transactional and non-transactional. And the secondaries are just standing there, um, wasting compute resources and not able to help with the right contention that, that may be arising at the primary. Last but not the least, uh, given the design right now, uh, you lose out in ability to horizontally scale from a single replica set to a sharded cluster because the moment you go to a sharded cluster, you cannot leverage the aspects of asset transactions that you uh, wanted to use uh, and, and build sort of a correct application on, on top of uh, MongoDB. Sharded, MongoDB sharded clusters still do not support multi-document transactions. How I think it's, it's worth uh, taking a moment to see how we at Yugabyte have designed a, a new database, a new transactional scale out database ground up that avoids some of these uh, inherent costs uh, of, of the MongoDB architecture. First of all is around sharding. Uh, sharding is not an afterthought in Yugabyte DB. It's fully automatic. It happens in any cluster uh, that, you, that you create um, and, and you can add nodes and the, the clusters uh, the new nodes will start getting uh, some of the existing shards and as a result will be able to contribute to the right, uh, uh, right resources that are uh, necessary to serve the incoming right request. Fault tolerance, uh, in, in, in terms of fault tolerance, both, both MongoDB and YugabyteDB look similar. Both use RAFT for fast primary election. Um, however, Yugabyte goes one step further, it uses RAP for even the data replication to ensure that before a commit is acknowledged back to uh, the client, the data is actually persisted um, synchronously and, and there is no replication lag that is, that is um, forcing the, the delay of transactional rights. Durability is also built into um, Yugabyte DB. Um, because we ensure through, through sync replication and majority vote, these are all default options. You don't have to uh, tune anything um, in order to get durability. Thereafter, uh, the ability to do uh, linearizable reads without doing quorum is a, is a big benefit of Yugobyte because uh, by ensuring uh, the strongly consistent replication during the write path, we, we are absolutely sure that the, the leader of a given shard always has the right data, the, the most accurate, most correct data that is available. As a result, it can serve it immediately as a client request comes in without consulting any of the replicas. Uh, in case of MongoDB, they are called secondaries. Uh, so and, and that that essentially is the heart of uh, single row asset inside uh, inside Yugabyte DB. 
Yugobyte DB even goes one step further towards multi-shard asset that is built into uh, both its uh, YSQL and YCQL uh, APIs uh, to ensure that as your data volume grows and, and you have to keep adding nodes, you don't have to let go of multi-shard transactions. You can ensure that your, your development velocity continues to remain uninterrupted. Last but not the least, the ability to have global secondary indexes uh, ensures that you, you can build applications much faster uh, by, by using the secondary key based queries as opposed to always being forced to um, essentially uh, you know, put all the data together in a single document and hence avoid uh, the need for things like uh, secondary indexes. With that, I have reached the end of my talk. I would like to uh, ask you to spin up your own local cluster. Just uh, go to our doc site and you can get going in, in less than five minutes. Thank you for watching. See you again in the next edition.